What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Epic 7 video. Today guys, I wanted to talk to you guys about the new progression system. I know a lot of you guys might be new to this game and for those of you guys may have left and are coming back, a lot of stuff has changed. You know, back in the day we used to recommend, hey man, just go over here, you know, you're going to start doing your, your sanctuary, you're going to open up this high command, and you're going to get your ancient coins and... You know, back in the day, we used to just open up accessory chests to get accessories, right? We would do Labyrinth to get gear. We would go through the adventure mode. We would clear all of the adventure, try to get the gear from adventure. And then we would find ourselves right in the hunt stage, doing hunts all day long until our faces fell off. Now, granted, the, the all day long hunts hasn't went away, but the progression has been very streamlined. So today I wanted to take a little bit of time and break down the new progression system so you guys have a better idea of what's going on as you guys get into the game. Especially with Epic 7 growing to the size that it's growing to, being top one of the top 10 games in the App Store consistently every single week since release is pretty crazy. So as you guys jump in the game, guys, the first thing you guys are going to do as you go through the adventure is you guys are just going to go through your stuff. So you'll go through your chapter one through 10. You'll do your selective summons, as you guys are probably familiar with, and you'll pull. Now, in terms of selective summons, this is not a good example. But when you go to your selective summons, there should be a little button that you guys can click something along the lines of this that will tell you everything that you have a chance to get in your selective summon. Once you check that out, I'm sure you guys have watched a ton of videos. I advise going for a hero that's going to help you out in whatever dungeon it is that you've decided you're going to do. So if you're going for straight for Warman 11, heroes like Chloe or Tywin can be very, very helpful for you when you're starting out. If you decided that you want to go for Banshee because you want to get like the destruction gear and all that other stuff, then heroes like Vildred could definitely help you out, especially being the super strong farmer that he is. With A11, I don't necessarily advise that you go for A11 up front. But if you guys do decide to go for A11, Vildred also can be great there as well. If you guys are going for Golem first, heroes like Balen Cezan, Araminta, those are great heroes to start with as well if you guys are deciding to go for the Golem for the tanky sets and attack sets and stuff like that. Once you guys get through all of that, the old progression is absolutely over. Because nowadays you have the adventure quest where you can go through and if you follow along with the adventure quest, it'll basically tell you everything that you need to do. You'll go through, it'll put you up against different situations in PvE with amazing, amazing rewards that will allow you to progress in a way that we weren't able to do before. Now, when you guys are doing this, I advise that you guys really pay attention and don't get too excited. Some of the earlier rewards aren't as good as the later rewards, but the earlier rewards in the Adventure Quest do give you a solid starter set for your heroes and really put you off on the right track. Now, there are a couple of things that I do want to address, and that's really selecting a team when you guys start the game. Now, I know a lot of people, if you guys are watching this video, are probably at a point where you just ran off with a bunch of units, because <laughs> this is what I did when I started as well, and now you're at a point, you're like, okay, well, what do I do? You know, I did all this, I built all these units, I'm stuck, I'm stuck in like a 7 floor dungeon, or things are going wrong, or I don't know what to do, or I'm building too much stuff, or whatever the case may be. But you're here, and I'd like to offer you some insight to kind of help you get out of that position of feeling that that feeling of overwhelm. Now, I'm not saying that you're not going to experience that overwhelm again, because there's a lot of stuff in this game. But there's a couple of steps that you guys can follow early on as you guys are getting to in your adventure quest. And you guys are doing all the cool stuff and getting all your gear to really help streamline your progression. And I, can I share with you guys those these little tips? Is that cool? I got your permission. <laughs> all right. So as you guys go through this adventure quest like i said they're pretty much going to tell you everything that you guys need to do you'll go through this eventually you'll head through 10 10 you'll get your moonlight summoned from here after you finish clearing make sure again pro tip real quick i just want to share this with you guys because this happened to me and i was pretty sick about it but if you guys go through chapter one and you guys clear up to this area right here and you move through east terranor this will actually take you to chapter 10 but if you go through this shortcut and you clear up to the boss, it won't give you credit for the story quest because you actually have to go through all of the chapters and clear the story quest or it'll just make you go through again. So if you're like me, I did the shortcut and I spent hours trying to beat all the bosses way before I was ready. I got it done just to find out that I had to do it all over again. So that's just something that you guys definitely want to be cognizant of. As you guys go through this, you're pretty much just rushing the story mode. You guys are going to take advantage 
of all of the maze stages. So any stage that looks like this right here, or has some kind of maze in it that has some kind of chest drop, you guys are gonna go through, you guys are gonna get the chest drop, you're gonna get the gear from those in conjunction with the gear from here, and you guys are going to set up your team in a way that allows you to be successful. The big thing here, guys, is team selection in the beginning is one of the most important aspects of early player progression period this literally can change the amount of time it takes you to get stuff done especially early on by weeks or months depending on how scattered you get see so for me when i was trying to build every hero in the book and put all my molagora all over the place it really really slowed my progression down and by kind of streamlining and really taking a second to really think about what type of team you're going to build or researching the type of team you're going to build it can really help you and, and help lessen the time it's going to take for you to get from point a to point b to point c now what i mean by that is this game has a lot of heroes guys a lot of heroes and depending on what you decide to start with when you guys do your selective summons and i talked about this a little bit early on is really going to determine what direction you're going to take how i like to look at this and and if i was going to start the game all over again i would be like all right look man what heroes am i going to build or what team would i like to build and i would base that off of the type of gear that i was going for so my typical recommendation is if you guys are looking to break into the game quickly get you know kind of some crutches going and give yourself a, a strong base i recommend starting out with wyvern with you know with the red dragon starting with that dude first just mainly because he's going to give you speed gear speed gear is going to give your team turn advantage and you guys will be good to go now granted golem is easier and a lot of players favor golem over wyvern just because it is easier to get to like floor 10 which is definitely a viable option as well especially if you guys are going to get more attack sets but to be honest it doesn't really matter which route you go okay so if you guys want to go golem first great if you guys want to go banshee first great if you want to go wyvern first great it doesn't matter but pick one and stick with it now the reason i say that is because when you look at the gear eventually you're going to get to a point where your stats are going to be what matters initially your sets are going to be really important because you want to get those stat bonuses so you know when you're starting to build your heroes as you guys can look at this angelica on this baby account you guys can see that the stats for her aren't really that great but it's I'm finishing a set so I can get her a little bit of extra speed so she could be a little bit faster than what she normally is. And then as I get gear, I can kind of fill this in. Now, back in the day, we had the big concern because it was really hard for us to get jewels. But nowadays, with the upgrade to the Steel Workshop, you can now craft jewelry, which can really help you out, especially if you guys are starting to farm dungeons really early on. You also can plus your gear up. If you guys are paying attention to this, the Alchemist Steeple was recently added as well. And you can literally feed all of your crap gear here in order to get extra charms to plus your gear up in a way that's a lot easier than it used to be. Now granted, you can only do this once a week, but the amount of charms that you can get if you feed enough quality gear, or at least decent quality gear, don't, don't feed your good stuff, you know, but the, the lesser quality stuff that you're just trying to get rid of, you can definitely hawk that off, you can feed that, and then you can get some charms to really help ease out your progression. Now, I recommend deciding which dungeon you're gonna try to get into as soon as you start the game. Now, I know this is this is a tall order, but really sitting down, like after you've done your selective summons, because chances are you've watched guides, people have said, get Sez, get Vildred, you know, start with Tywin, get Ken, you know, whoever it is that you guys have started with, really sit down and look at your team. And I just want to just break down a base example for you guys. Let's say I wanted to start and I decided to go with Golem. So I decided that I was going to go for Araminta and I was like, okay, cool. How does burn work? Burn works where it scales with the caster's attack, so I need I know I need as much attack power as possible on my Araminta. Now, I happen to have Araminta on this account, so when I look at my Araminta, I'm going to say, okay, what type of gear do I want on Araminta? Could I run her on speed? Yeah, I'm sure I could, but I could also run her on attack, and attack sets would probably be the best for her so I can maximize her attack damage, right? And increase the amount of damage that she deals in a burn. So... When I look at Araminta, I say, okay, well, I want to put together a golem team. What do I need for golem? I probably need a defense break, probably need an attack break. I probably need a an attack buff. Oh, wait, my Araminta has an attack buff. But I also need a healer, so who else am I going to run? And let's say I didn't pull any other crazy heroes. Let's say I can go for Hazel, which is a three-star that I could definitely use, and she comes with a specialty change, so it's something that I can definitely play with. 
I could also use Mercedes because she's all also already given to me. I can go Mercedes, I can go Hazel, plus my Aura Mintha, and then plus whatever else I need. So if that's a defense breaker, I can fill that in with whatever else I need, and then we could just kind of go from there. Or I can use a win unit because Golem technically is win, and I could just have some fun and make the best of what I have. Now, once I've identified whatever team it is that I'm going to run, and again, that's just an example. Once I have that team in place, I literally am not going to build anything else. The reason I say I'm not going to build anything else is because I'm going to rely on that particular team and getting that team the best it can be in order to allow me to progress. Because contrary to some, some beliefs that are out there is that you have to build all these different teams immediately, right? And so a lot of new players, I did this myself. I came in thinking I got to build a Golem team. I got to build a Wyvern team. I got to build a Banshee team all at once. And I spread myself really, really thin. But once I realized this is like, okay, I'm gonna build this one team. And I started to focus on this. And you guys can see this when I did the Wyvern 1 to 11 challenge in two weeks or whatever. And that was my challenge was to get there in two weeks. We were just shy, but I mean, we arrived, but we did not owe it. But looking at that, it's just like focusing one team and maximizing your, your stats and putting your Mulgoras into the key units that you're using, specifically the five stars and maybe some four stars, depending on what you have, then that's going to allow you to progress a lot faster especially in conjunction with the adventure quest quests <laughs> that they give you and the gear that you get from there in order to help you really move forward after you guys focus that one team whatever it is whether that's banshee whether that's wyvern whether that's golem whatever it is you lock that in and my advice is the only time you're going to swap a hero out is if that hero is so good that it doesn't make sense not to put them in the team so what i mean by that is so let's say i ran my aramitho my hazel my mercedes and let's say i picked muchacha for the defense break just for the sake of example, that's what I was just going to run, and that's what I decided to go with. I got the recovery block here for Hazel on her skill 1. I got burn damage. I got attack buff. I got AoE damage. I got all the stuff that, you know, I would need for like a starter golem team initially up front and my defense break from Muchacha. Now, let's say I'm running Muchacha. My team's, you know, 5 stars, right? But then I pull Ken, right? I'm like, oh man, I got Ken. Ken's got attack break, defense break, and burn. And it'll really help Aramintha. Then I'm going to take Muchacha out and I'm going to put Ken there because the kits are similar. Now, what I mean kits are similar is not that they have the same kit. What I mean is their utility is close to the same. So what am I using Muchacha for? I'm using Muchacha for the defense break, right? Now, if I pulled Ken, Ken with the defense break on two, plus the attack break on three, plus the defense break on one and the burn, right? Who's he going to replace? He's going to take out my Muchacha to fill that primary role. And then that's how I'm going to adjust. And that's typically the only time I'm going to adjust a team when I start out. Your question could be like, okay, cool, but what if I pull all these other OP units? Let's say I just start pulling all these units that I can't use right now, or I don't know what to do with, and you just lock them. So you go to your unit, you hit that lock button, boop, just like that. You just put them aside, and you just continue to focus on whatever it is that you're doing. I know this could sound like, what? Well, what if I want to build all these heroes? Well, when you're trying to build a bunch of heroes early on, that's how you get stuck. Because there's a lot that goes into building a hero. So let's look at Araminta, for example. When I look at Araminta, let's say, since her damage scales with her attack, I want to get her attack power to, to two to 3,000. And this is going to take some time. This is not something that's going to happen overnight, so it's going to take some time. I want to get her crit chance up, you know, to 100% crit, and I want to get her crit damage up. Now, there's that's just one way to build Araminta, because there's multiple ways. You could just build Araminta with super high attack and some speed, just so she just you know deals damage off of the burns but that's there's you know that's neither here nor there that's a conversation for another day but i'm looking at what types of stats do i need to build so this is the point where now you go to youtube your favorite youtuber if it's me you just watch my videos if it's somebody else you go watch their videos and you look at how the particular units are built then you make note you make note of how those units are built you write yourself some goals then you start to work towards those goals to help yourself streamline those stats and then once you do that what you guys are going to look at is skill ups so a lot of people are like what you know what should i do with my molagora and i advise initially you only using your Molagoras for your four stars and five star heroes that you know you're going to be holding on to for a while. So, for instance, if you know that you're going to be using Aramintha, or let's say you pull ML Aramintha, or something crazy that you know is going to be part of your team for an extended period of time, then those are the heroes that you're going to Molagora, and you're not going to stop Molagoring those heroes until they're max skill. All right, this is one of probably one of the biggest mistakes that I made. I was cherry picking. I was putting Molagora here, putting Molagora there. And because in the beginning, I didn't realize 
how much damage you actually deal when you actually skill your heroes up. Because when you look at this, like this 10% damage is actually 10% damage, right? So this total, you got 5, 10, 20, 30% extra damage on top of whatever it is that your gear is providing you. So Molagoring your heroes is crazy. After you've locked in and you decided, again, you got your team going, you know where your Molagoras are gonna go, the next thing up is going to be six starring your heroes, okay? Six starring in this game is huge, guys. It's ridiculous. Like, and once you have your set team, this is why it's so helpful to have a set team, is because it takes some time to six star heroes. I calculate it's about five to six hundred crystals ish to six star a single hero. And you can use the free crystals that you're getting when you guys are starting the game to kind of speed up and expedite this process. So when you guys are going through this game and you guys are working on your, your team that you've identified, whatever it is, that's the team that you're gonna six star first. Now I advise getting your team, your full team to five star first, just in case you pull anything along the way, because the five star team, to be honest, is enough to get you through the normal scenario, up to your 10-10 summon through most of Abyss, and quite a ways through the initial progression of the game, which will give you a little bit of cushion to you know, pull other heroes and really sit down and look at, okay, what do I do now? Is this hero better than this hero? Yada, yada, yada. That way you're good to go. And if you're hesitant or you don't know if you're gonna hold on to a hero for a very long time, before you put the Molagora into them and start skilling them up, ask. You know, get information, pop on YouTube, hop into a Twitch stream, you know, find out first before you just start, you know, throwing stuff in there before you end up with heroes Mulligore like me that I'm like, dang, I wish I can get those Mulligore back, but I can't, <laughs> right? So that's definitely something that you want to pay attention to. After you guys have locked in your team and you guys have worked on it, you got your Mulligore situation, you start six-starring your heroes, that's pretty much the way that you're gonna set yourself up for success for the rest of the game. Because after that, what's gonna happen is, now what I like to do is called the hand-me-down process. Is where I like to categorize unit based on type, in my mind, or on paper, and then I go from there. So for instance, let's say my Araminta, I said, I wanna have the best Araminta in the game. And let's say I want it to go 100% crit, 200% crit damage, or however much crit damage I can get you know, 200 speed, 4,000 attack, right? I know crazy stats, I get it, but just as an example. Now, let's say this Aramitha was at those stats and I was still farming Golem to get gear for her. You're gonna get to a point eventually where the gear that you're getting is good, but it's not good enough to replace the gear that you currently have. And this can happen at any variation at any point in time in the game. So for instance, let's say I got this dagger and this dagger has speed, attack, crit and health. So let's say I rolled this to plus 15, it rolled 10 speed, 20 crit, 15% attack. What that's gonna say is now, anything that I roll that's close to this, but not as good, I can then just hand me down to another unit that I wanna build, but I might not be necessarily using yet. But any piece of gear that's better than this, now I can put that new piece of gear on my Araminta, take that old piece of gear off, and hand that off to some other unit that I might not be using yet, but I definitely want to build. Or let's say for the sake of example, that I'm gonna be using Mercedes because she's a free four star that everybody gets, then I can really start to trade gear between the two. And not necessarily trade, but hand me down between the two. So I'd focus on one hero first. I'd be like, man, I wanna get my Araminta squared away. All right, so cool, she has decent gear. So now the gear that I pull that's not a replacement, but it's still decent, can now go on my Mercedes instead. And then I do the same thing with my support. So if I look at Hazel, I'm like, okay, cool. So she's a support. I know I need her fast, I need a lot of speed. Her heal scale with her attack, so I definitely want to get her some attack power. I could probably put her on an attack set too, but I'm just going to change the way that the stats are. So I might run with the health ring, a defense necklace, and a speed boot, right? Percentages, though, except for speed. Speed can't be a percent, but defense percent, HP percent. And then those are the subsets I'm looking for too. Speed, HP, defense, attack, right? Those are the subs that I'm looking for. Now, as I get those subs on this support, let's say if I wanted to build like Aether, then I can look at Aether and be like, oh, Aether also scales with attack healing, so now I can kind of trade gear between the two. Now, if I'm building a pure support like Angelica, then I can say, well, I need speed, HP, and defense, and resistance, so now if I'm building any other solid, like straight up healer type in the game that doesn't scale with attack, then those are the stats that I can look for. I can make my Angelica 
it the best Angelica I can, and then whatever gear doesn't replace her gear, I can then move to some other healer that I might build or use later. That's kind of how I address this, and what that allows me to do when I look at a system and I start trying to streamline my team from the beginning is it allows me to really get in there and stay focused and make pro progression really, really fast. A lot faster than I otherwise would, especially when I started playing Epic 7 back in November, when it was like, Everything I did, it was just all over the place. I was just scatterbrained and I didn't know what to do. And it just led me into a position of overwhelm really, really fast. So with this, and when you look at progression, streamlining and focusing on the things that you need to knock out immediately, and then just doing that consistently over time is what's gonna help you progress faster than anybody else, guys. So my advice to you guys is if you guys are spinning your wheels or you're in a position where you feel overwhelmed, just go back to the fundamentals. Go back to the basics. Ask yourself, what team am I trying to build? <laughs> what team do I need to work on? What's going to help me out? And just focus that team. Make that team the best you can. Look at the gear plus the gear. Do you have the right stats that you need for your gear? Do you know what the right stats for your gear are? If not, find out what those stats are and then work on getting those stats. And then if you guys just do that every time... You guys will be good to go. And it's just step by step by step by step. Once you get to that point of overwhelm again, return back to the fundamentals. What am I doing right now? What team do I need to be working on? Focus on that team, move forward, and then you guys are pretty much good to go. So anyway, guys, uh, that's all I wanted to cover today. I just wanted to kind of go over this progression process. So to kind of streamline this so you guys can have a place where you can come and just watch this video and be like, okay, okay, well, you know, I'm losing my mind. What is it that I need to do? All right, D said, focus on my team. Then look at your team. All right, my Banshee team, my Wyvern team, whatever. What stats do I need? Do I have those stats? Am I stuck in Wyvern 9? Okay, cool. Do I have 800 defense? Do I have, you know, up to 10k HP on all of my units? Units. No, well, that's probably why I'm losing units. Am I playing harmful effects? No, then that's probably what I need to do. And those are things that you guys can look at no matter where you're at in the game. And if you focus on that one thing at a time and break it down into to manageable chunks, you guys will find success so fast. <laughs> and it'll add so much ease to, to your mind frame and you guys will be able to move forward. So anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, this is your boy Demo bringing you guys another video. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below and I'll be happy to assist. With that being said, we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.